Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp. Welcome to uh, Friday, January 24th. I'm time stamping this, so if you're watching this anytime in the future, I have a couple events, a couple fun videos, a couple things that are opening this weekend as well, uh, and I have it all here uh, locally and a little bit of a globally uh, along for your weekend as well. All right, let's kick things off with a little bit of that weather out there. It's 30 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 42. Your low is going to be 30 degrees. Um, and, you know, it's going to be pretty good uh, with highs into the 40s pretty much going on out through the weekend with winter mixtures, rain and snow. You know, in higher elevations, you can expect some of the uh, moisture in the air to be more snow, but you can expect more of that kind of uh, ugly gray, wet kind of weather happening in the down in the valley here in Missoula. And if you are planning on going out in a out as well, especially up on the slopes. Uh, you can go to onthesnow.com for more information about some of these slopes, but here's a nice little overview that I took from their website. Uh, Whitefish Mountain Ski Resort, uh, they had two inches of fresh new powder in the last 24 hours. Looks like they have a good uh, base and height. Um, Big Sky uh, Resort uh, hasn't had any fresh powder, but they do have a 33 base, uh, 71 on the top. Um, Montana Snowball, uh, they look like they uh, had uh, three inches in the last 72 hours, but of course many of this stuff will start changing as weather is looking uh, pretty snowy in the area, as you can see from these uh, icons right here. Uh, Showdown, um, Montana. Uh, they had two inches in the last 72 hours. It doesn't look like they're going to have too much fresh powder, but it is still green to go. Um, all these ski resorts are pretty much good to go. Uh, Bridger Bowl, uh, three inches in the last 72 hours. Discovery Ski Area has two inches in the last 72 hours, but it, you can expect some of those uh, snows to be happening there uh, this weekend as well as today. So um, if you are planning on going out and about, uh, just always uh, check many different resources or you know a call ahead and try to see if they have any fresh new powder. But a lot of those uh, resorts are pretty well stocked when it comes to the snow season it is pretty much the middle of winter time all right let's talk about some news things happening there's a lot of things happening um in montana as uh, is one thing in about montana and according to our uh, veteran superstar susan campbell renault about uh montana has the largest per capita of veterans um in uh, the nation uh of course a brand new 31 million dollar uh, va clinic is being proposed in missoula uh the clinic would create 110 new jobs in the 62,000 square foot facility which is three times the size of the existing facility which is in a uh, kind of a business building with other offices and whatnot this would be uh a central location for a lot of veterans to go to focusing on pharmacy women's health sleep therapy radiology physical therapy and lab work and much uh more than what they've already been doing. Um, because the clinic is being paid by the federal government, a good portion of its $31 million total cost will be pumped into the economy here from the federal treasury. Uh, it will be located off Broadway near the airport. Uh, the completion of this project is slated for mid-2022. Well, that's good uh, news from some local progress. Uh, some things that are happening in the city of Missoula as well is that Lucky's, uh, Lucky's Market, the grocery store that just opened back in the summer of 2018, has officially announced that they will be closing up within the next three weeks. Uh, it announced Tuesday morning, uh, according to Business Insider and other publications reported Tuesday that Lucky's Market will close 32 of its 39 stores nationwide uh, with February tw uh, 12th as the final close day. Of course, uh, that is one of many uh, or, of places as well. Uh, uh, Kroger Grocery Chain announced that it was pulling its financial backing of Lucky's after reviewing Lucky's market portfolio. January, you know, it's uh, all the uh, returns, all the fiscal year uh, usually kind of does that with a lot of businesses as well as tax season is upon us. Um, one of the many things that are also happening at the mall is that J.C. Penney's is closing. Um, along with many other re, uh, retailers in the city of Missoula to deal with the many changes of a growing city. Missoulian uh, came out with a list of businesses closing in Missoula, and you can check that out more by going on to Missoulian.com. I have a lot of news, so I'm just going to try to breeze through it as fast as possible. Um, one of the major stories in the state of Montana is that a new major news story got picked up on the national circuit involving an American Indian teenager whose body has been found after going missing on New Year's. So, uh, Selena, not afraid, is a 16-year-old who was found on Monday, January 20th, almost three weeks after her last known appearance. She was only a mile away from where she was last seen at a gas station where her car broke down. Uh, not afraid a uh, car broke down uh, where, according to her passenger, she scaled a fence and was not seen again, according to police reports. Uh, of course, police have uh, now ruled it as a uh, hypothermia uh, caused related death. In national news, 
Hey, you've probably been hearing about this all week long. President Donald Trump's trial and the Senate started Tuesday and so far. Uh, they'll be wrapping up this week um, with the uh, prosecution, uh, all their statements, all their uh, information. So uh, today will be the last day uh, the prosecution will uh, present their arguments. And then on Saturday, they're going to be talking. Uh, the defense will be kicking off their uh, uh, their counter argument along with uh, the following week starting um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Sunday they'll get off, but the rest of the week will be devoted to um, both sides um, going back and forth for the hearings. So for so far, the Democrat side, uh, the, uh, well, the prosecution side has uh, taken these four days. And then the next step would be uh, four days for the uh, Trump's teens arguments. And then on January 29th, January 30th, you're going to expect a lot of senators are going to have a lot of questions uh, about what's uh, the, some of these proceedings as well. Um, on January 34, uh, 31st, uh, of course, four hours of debate on whether the subpoena wit to subpoena witnesses and, um, uh, and subpoenas in general, a vote on witnesses and documents, and a vote on other motions. Of course, if all votes fail, the Senate could move to acquit President Donald Trump. Um, one of the things that are, uh, so I just want to kind of go over that. There's been a lot going on there as well. And during the trial, uh, many senators are uh, are told to refrain from speaking. And so during the recesses, a lot of the sides uh, have been holding strong and doing press conferences and interviews and talking about this trial. Um, International news. Uh, one of the things that's happening that's sweeping China is the uh, coronavirus. It kind of sounds like a uh, bad, fast, and furious movie, but it is a serious disease with flu-like symptoms that have already claimed up to 18 lives. Um, uh, the virus was first reported in the World Health Organization on December th December 31st and has been under investigation. One of the big things is Wuhan, which is home of 11 million residents and also one of the biggest uh, transportation hubs in China, uh, decided to take uh, the next step and by closing uh, down and locking down their city and to basically kind of quarantine themselves um, and as a and as a result of one of the biggest migrations in um, China every year during the Lunar New Year where a lot of people are uh, traveling to see their family it's a big holiday Chinese New Year and uh, this is putting delay on a lot of this, and a lot of people have been um, quoted in saying that they are leaving a little bit earlier just so they can get on the, on the thing. But according to uh, officially on Thursday at 11 a.m., that Wuhan in China is basically locked down for this uh, health uh, emergency that's happening there. Chinese authorities have suggested that the newly identified coronavirus is spreading between people primarily through coughing, kissing, and contact with saliva. The number of infection from this pneumonia, pneumonia causing uh, coronavirus has uh, multiplied in recent days with 568 confirmed cases in the mainland of China as well as at the end of Wednesday. According to the Communist Party, uh, People's Daily, up more than 300 announced on Tuesday, um, totally more than 600 cases, but this is uh, what they're tolling so far. There could be even more as well that they're not reporting. The World Health Organization on Wednesday proposed, postponed a day of decision on whether to declare the outbreak um, uh, constituents a public health emergency of uh, international concern, that uh, designation would help mobilize resources to prevent the virus's spread. So, so far, there's definitely a lot going on here as well, and those are more recent reports of it. Uh, this is an ongoing thing, so you can always check out more information, npr.org, CNN, uh, all, all sorts of news outlets to find out a little bit more about this as well. But so far, uh, from what uh, it's, I've discerned from these reports, is that it's pretty much localized in uh, China. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for your news. There's a lot going on, and I wanted to get through it as fast as possible. But I have a couple new programs going to be airing on MCAT. These are a couple new programs, a couple old programs in the mix, but these are uh, some great programs that are kicking off this weekend. Um, and when I come back, I'm going to talk about a couple of movies that are coming out this weekend, so stay with me. And, you know, in the, in the big picture, we've entered this era where we've, we've jacked our society up on fossil fuels. You know, each of our households is consuming a vast amount, and uh, most of our lifestyles are predicated on, on access to cheap fossil fuels. And so, you know, we've, we've become addicted. That's the reality. We're all addicts. And the thing with addicts is that addicts do a lot of bad stuff. 
you know, I'm be honest with you, and you all know it, because some of you probably have addicts in your family, and we, you know, rationalize, and they lie, and they, it's always your problem. You know, and, and we've entered this era, which Montana is well into, which is an era known as extreme extraction. It feels like we are preparing for a war. All six feet ten inches of John prepare me for what is to come. He pushes the cease and desist letter across the desk. What happens if I don't sign this? His face is grim. The medical board will indict you. Dread runs through me. I think of all the other midwives in Montana, my sisters. The order requires you to go to court and defend your case or agree to quit practicing. I'm not signing, I say. I crumple the letter into my fist. Let's go to court. My father took me to museums, ballets, and operas almost every weekend, so you were asking a concrete, point question. Even though your family had lived in the most culturally rich city in Russia for generations, you never went to the Hermitage with your daughter. Too much of a town to act like a tourist on your native soil. You stand up, a floating iceberg in the fog, followed by your little girl's steam, and begin to dry off. Our ancestors come from good stock, you remind me. She was a drunk liar. <laughs> My breasts will surely turn out fine and delicate like yours. My blood will suck up the lost riches and formal tea times you imagine your ghost once had and make a map on my body as well, unable to hide our true blue ties. Well, um, thank you for being here on this beautiful day. I, I teach at Missoula College and uh, I, I canceled all my afternoon classes, so I told students they can come here for extra credit. I don't see any of them here. They're playing, they must be playing hooking. <laughs> all right, I would do the same. All right. Um, well, when I, when I was first scheduled to do this, I was I was scheduled to read with the young adult uh, novel, which because my my protagonist is an 18 year old young man. So, but as you'll see when I, as I start to read here, the content of my uh, story is not your typical young adult kind of. Novel. If you're an organization in the city of Missoula and you wish to have your uh, nonprofit or civic group uh, recorded, you can request it at our website, MCAT.org. You can also call us at 542-6228. Many of those programs are made here locally in the city of Missoula, and you can jump on that at any time. All right, so well, let's talk about some movies that are coming out this weekend. Are you guys excited for this weekend as much as I am? Because uh, we're going to have a, basically one of those kind of uh, international movies, but with a little bit of a Hollywood flair to it. This movie that's coming out is The Gentleman. From the creator of those movies about British tough guys, no, the other guys, no, oh, the other, other guys, comes a group of not-so-gentle men in a movie called The Gentleman. So you can expect them to use violence and killing as a comedy routine, um, enjoy a movie that has uh, an Asian game, Gang. So th th this is basically kind of like the plot. An Asian game comes in and they bring the drugs. But the gentlemen are just like, hey, we're mobsters, but we don't do drugs, so we're good mobsters. And then anyways, there's fighting, blah, 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 probably big explosion. Uh, British boys must stop them because uh, they are greater evil rather than the racketeering, muscling small businesses they are bringing in the drugs, and drugs are bad. Basically, there's going to be a major shootout and yelling about stupid things that will make you laugh. So some will die, some will live. But you will be out like $10, $15 in the end. Uh, moving on, you have a horror movie that is coming out. And a horror movie in January means that it's almost guaranteed to be completely amazingly bad. Uh, have you ever taken a job with children and it was like, you know what? I'm, I, I'm going to be out of here. But you don't because, you know, you got to move the plot forward and you're watching the movie. And so when you watch this movie, it's just like, hmm, something weird is going on around here. And rather than leaving, <laughs> I'm going to uh, check it out. Uh, let's split up, gang, basically is the uh, ec uh, part of this movie as well. And watch a horror film about a zombie mom and her kids or undead mom, whatever. She's, she's not really that kind of zombie, but she's more or less like an entity of pure evil, blah, blah, blah. It's kind of like that movie, Mama. 
but about the horror of helicopter parents who just kind of let their kid become terrible people, but they're also re- like the worst and they don't know how to talk. But anyways, watch this lady get way watch the caretaker lady get in way over her head as you uh, as so you can in this oh man i my grammar's terrible i gotta stop reading this and i gotta go with my gut but anyways this movie starring the kids from stranger things so there's that i guess they have some kind of power to it at least they uh they didn't have to de-age him Moving on, we got a movie, uh, I don't know, like, I read the synopsis, and I'm like, that seems cool, but the picture that you see to my, to my right, um, <laughs> is, is this, is like a behind-the-scenes shot. It's, it's basically, that's the director on the left, and that's the, uh, the actress on the right. So, yet another reason to stay home comes a girl in a wheelchair, and a movie called Run. Um, uh, but let's not dwell on that. This movie is basically kind of like a mercy wannabe. Maybe she's stuck at home. Maybe she's trying to get away. Um, but the whole kind of deal is like, I guess with every horror film, it starts off basically like, it's like oh, I'm going to be with my mom, but something's off about her. All right, this something's really off about her. I should probably think about going. Okay, now I'm leaving. Okay, I'm going to leave. Oh, wait, now I can't get out. All right, now I have to figure out a way to get out. Turn the tables. All right, maybe I'll crawl out. And then blah, 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 explosions. or I don't know. It really depends. It looks like an indie film. And you probably might not see in the city of Missoula, so why bother? But I just wanted to do the trifecta for pre-critic. All right, so those are your movies that are coming out this this weekend as well. There wasn't much going on with your city council, but I do have a Dubbin stuff. But when I come back, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about the land use and planning. They're uh, opening a bunch of new um, commercial businesses um, in the uh, Expressway area. So we'll talk a little bit more about that when I come back right after Dubbin stuff of... Timetable from 1956. <clears throat> well, it's a chalkboard, that's for sure. But I'm more interested in, is in what's on the chalkboard. Words, ideas, schemes. <laughs> so, what's your plan? Because all I can see here is blood, hypodrugs, all sorts of things from left to right. It just doesn't make any sense. Well, come on, you just got to throw a couple ideas on the board and see where it goes. Okay, let's figure out what the whole deal with the sick husband, Car Riverside. All right, D O Dog. That's what that's what spells dog. All right, and this thing about So what you're trying to say is that this dog is a criminal? <laughs> Perhaps maybe the cat got the tongue. Oh, doctor? Hmm. I thought you wrote a dog for a second there. Well, the thing is about the dog is that it's not much of a suspect. A dog can't kill anyone with a knife, but a person, sir, can. I tell you what. And perhaps the doctor was trying to hide something. Maybe a mess up of a thing well, with surgery. And it's all just a hypothesis. To... True. True that. Well, and the thing is, you know, that's just stuff. Uh, Hypotheses oh, are... Go ahead. Go. No, you... Well, since you're interrupting, go ahead. Mm, yeah, uh... Perhaps if we take the road less traveled, we can uh, do some interviews and talk to some other folks. Maybe we can talk to the neighbors about where the doctor was. Yes, that's a great comment. I like the cut of your jib. Perhaps we can talk a little bit more about this, maybe over coffee. Uh, or, uh, you don't look like you're too happy about that what so bit. Um, fine, avert your eyes. Maybe we'll just go to Riverside, ask some questions, find the killer. Hey guys, welcome back. So there's a project that's happening up, up, up Expressway, and um, one of the ma- many things that are there is this is during the land use and planning meeting. Um, it's to add a commercial building off of Expressway. Just imagine kind of like a condominium, but just for businesses. Uh, and this is a mini commercial spaces for many businesses. Um, so Andrew uh, Brona, uh, who is talking about this project, he's with the city design uh, board. No, uh, what's that called? Uh, Design. Uh, okay. Anyways, uh, let's not harp on that. Let's. Here's what the buildings will look like, and here kind of an example of some of the things that are ha- happening in Expressway. So let me just uh, get my thing ready. Okay. Here's what he had to say. The project consists of four industrial building shells totaling 39,000 square feet and 40 parking spaces. The parking requirement will be reviewed at the time of tenant improvement and business license approval for each tenant space. 
The unit's interiors are not included with this, uh, with this proposal. Subsequent building permits will be submitted for the build out of each individual unit. Here's a typical elevation of one of the buildings. Here's another typical elevation, as well as the lower graphic is the view from Expressway if you were to drive by or walk by. Title 20 has specific standards for enterprise commercial development. I will go further into those standards and explain how each of the standards are met. The number of the standards typically partake with the parking and pedestrian circulation of the overall site. EC uses must try to reduce the visual impact of parking from the public right of way. And All right, so uh, many, like uh, speaking of parking, um, if you were still paying attention, is that uh, one of the issues that some of the residents and um, adjacent property owners are concerned about is that they're building a building that will ha house a lot of businesses, but unfortunately they won't just house enough uh, space for parking overall. This is what uh, um, Tim Mar uh, Marin had to say about that. Uh, this is not commercial enterprise. This is commercial. Um, they have used, they've, they've done everything to optimize the profitability and the use of the project, but it is not what needs to be in this light industrial zone. Uh, I sent a letter to Mr. Brown. I don't know if you all have copies of that or not, but uh, I have concerns about parking. The applicant is requesting that they're using parking space for light industrial standards, which would be 40 spaces. If this was commercial, it would have to have 82 spaces. There are five units in here where you will not be able to park in front of your own unit. In the west building, the center building, and the east building, um, it works out to one parking place per unit. I don't know anybody that can run a business in approximately 2,000 square feet that needs parking for one car. All right, so um, he does continue on to talk a little bit more about some of the concerns. Uh, so far, the intention of the, uh, the 39,000 square foot commercial property is unclear. Uh, they don't know exactly who's going to rent and who's going to use it. The developers idea is just to build the complex and fill it in with tenants. Tim um, is also not confident in this project since it doesn't have many spots for parking. This project also has uh, larger doors for larger vehicles to park inside this new structure. Tim is worried of uh, the trailers or any businesses that would be uh, for um, commercial trailers and um, renovations and that kind of stuff. Of course, he did have a lot to say during this thing, and you can check out the whole uh, comment of what he had to say, but um, one of the things that were, they were talking about was stormwater. Um, and uh, this is what Tim had to say in terms of just like the stormwater uh, runoff, and this is what he had to say. They're counting on the runoff from these lots to go to an antiquated storm drain system, which has not been maintained, that goes into drainage swales which back when Sunlight Development Montana Power created the original drainage plant was all large, long-running retainment, retainment ponds. Um, those mostly have either been not maintained or have been allowed to be filled in. And I don't know where they're going to make this water go. All right, so uh, of course, uh, many of the other concerns that Tim also had was the trash. Um, just the, uh, the typical pickup for the trash in the, pit, in, in the area, um, the door in the back, it's, it's, it's a pretty tight squeeze uh, according to what the plans kind of showed there as well if you get a chance to look at this. The uh, intention of the property is unclear, but the developer plans to have a diversity of commercial businesses but have to reflect the business, that, that reflect the businesses. So here's Aaron Hanks. He's with Hanks Architecture who designed the building. And he's, he's talking a little bit more about the parking and a little bit more about, oh, wait, wait, hold on a second. Sorry. 
So I, before I get to um, Hank, I forgot to mention Andrew Berna uh, responds to the parking issue in this particular area. Because none of the units have been developed yet, they, the parking requirement will be reviewed at the time of building permit. And with that building permit, they will propose a use. And if that use is more intensive than the allowance of the site, they will either need to make that parking up somewhere on site, apply for a reduction, or their business license or building permit will be denied. All right, so that was the, uh, the, 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 the solid um, teeth in the matter regarding the parking spot as well. But to talk a little bit more about uh, uh, design, parking, but also uh, the reflection of the businesses that are open there, here is uh, Mr. Hank. He is certainly keenly aware that the site is tight as far as parking. Um, and he understands that he may have a prospective tenant who may come in here who has a higher intensity parking than he can provide for. And so they understand that there may be some people coming in here that they just can't. Um, I don't think they've ever intended um, to see this as things like insurance offices or uh, retail establishments, restaurants, things like that. Although certainly some of those I think are allowed in this zoning district. Um, but they understand that certainly some of the parking, um, some uses may not have adequate parking. And we've gone into this with that, with that understanding. So um, there, there are options to increase parking somewhat. So for example, if someone took, uh, took a space that didn't require an overhead door or didn't have a loading area, they could, um, they could designate the space that's striped off in front of their area to add another two spaces. Um, so there's options that it's, it's just really it's a tenant dependent thing. We take that one at a time so each tenant, uh, tenant improvement is evaluated. All right, so there's going to be a lot, a lot of uh, commercial uh, potential that's going to be opening off Expressway. Um, if you remember some of the commercial buildings located kind of like off uh, Reserve Street, like going towards the back way through uh, the Missoula Cemetery, you can kind of see the kind of like really tight commercial buildings. It's not, it's not too tall. It's, it's nice. Uh, fairly small uh, commercial buildings. Um, but of course, so far the city will look into uh, more about stormwater and also be uh, keen aware about the project as it develops. Um, Jordan Hess says um, on the city council, he said they looked into some of the things that were not addressed during this meeting and any kind of further concerns, you can contact uh, uh, the chair of the land use and planning, um, Jordan Hess, through the city of Missoula's website at ci.missoula.mt.us. So if you're concerned about any kind of um, new land use or zoning properties or stuff like that. Uh, Jordan has, has become the chair of the Land Use and Planning Committee. And you can go on to, like I said, ci.missoula.mt.us. You can go into the search bar and you can literally type in Jordan Hess. And it'll bring you City Council to ward member. Right here, you know, like you can, it's more advanced search right here, but it'll basically pretty much bring you right into who you needed to go to with the link as well. And then you have his email, you have his phone number right there. And yeah, I mean, it's uh, a lot of uh, citizens of Missoula, especially in land use and planning. There's a lot of zoning, um, things are being done. High density is becoming a new thing in the city of Missoula as well. So one of the things I wanted to take away from this meeting is the fact that uh, in industrial light, and they're going through the city of Missoula to be like, okay, so we build this commercial building, but there's also going to be some parking issues. And that's kind of like, uh, kind of goes hand in hand with Missoula if you really think about it. There's, uh, Missoula has always been fighting with parking issues and trying to fill in a lot of spaces that uh, become vacant but they don't stay vacant for long. And that's one thing that uh, I definitely want you to take away from the city council report is that there's always, uh, there's always room uh, for things to be filled up almost instantly. And that's the, the progress that is the city of Missoula. All right, so I have another video for you guys, and this is uh, an art clip from the Zootown Arts Community Center at their, at their new location off Main Street. If you get a chance to see it, um, you should check out this art gallery that's there. They also have a very beautiful facility is there as well. So here is the art clip, and when I get back, I'm gonna be talking about some events that are happening in Missoula, so stay with me. Thank you. 
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some events that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. It's time for events. Events. Things that are happening in the city of Missoula. I got this from MissoulaEvents.net, and so can you. Uh, they're doing a mid uh, digital marketing strategies with K Rose Marketing. Uh, Missoula Food Bank and Community Center, they're doing a marketing consulting, passionately helps small businesses owners define and achieve their individual vision version of success. Well, success looks different for each person. Uh, Caroline uh, Rose is doing this uh, deal that's happening uh, right now at the food bank as well. Um, you can look at more information by looking at K-Rose Marketing. Uh, Tiny Tales and Storytime at the Musical Public Library. It is a wonderful resource for a lot of kids who are just getting into reading, but it's a good uh, lesson for them to uh, learn to read before they get into school, and so they're not left behind because there's so many kids that go to school that already know how their ABCs and all that stuff, so it's always good for them to get exposed to books, and Musical Pub Pub Public Library has these regular Tiny Tales and Storytime at the MPL. Uh, preschool Playgroup at Roots Echo Sports Center. Um, this is from walking to five years of age. This is Monday through Saturday from 11 to 12 p.m. It's $10 per child, $15 for siblings. It is fun to be indoors um, and active. It's hard to be active and outdoors um, that don't relate to skiing or snowboarding, but hey, sometimes people don't like to be cold, but this is a good way for people to stay inside. So at Roots Acro Sports Center, fit, uh, formerly Bitterroot Gymnastics, um, the um, they get to have a bunch of uh, indoor padded foam pits, trampolines, and all that fun stuff for a lot of those young kids, and they get hands-on help from the staff. Hands-on, speaking of, um, engineering. You, your kids get to learn all about engineering at Spectrum Discovery Center. So opening at 11 a.m. today. Um, Spectrum Discovery Area is open for all visitors of all ages. They have a, a constant um, revolving door of scientific exploration, and this particular one is... Um, Innovate, create, and test your own inventions at the Discovery Bench. And their makerspace is Goldie Blocks. Um, hey, a big thing that's happening for women is Savvy Women Only Course Downing Mountain Lodge. This is Avalanche Level 1. It's about $600, but you actually get uh, Avalanche certified. Um, what does that mean? Savvy Level 1 course is designed for current and aspiring female backcountry travelers. This course focuses on developing a solid foundation in avalanche knowledge and backcountry travel skills, following both the AIARE and the American Avalanche Association A3 curriculum. Instructors cover uh, systematic approaches for sorting and prioritizing information in the complex environment of decision making in the backcountry. And this is going to be happening at Downing Mountain Lodge. All right, so if you're into that, Great. Uh, but Cribbage and Bridge is happening at the Missoula Senior Center, the best dance floor in the city of Missoula. I, I just like saying that because they have a really cool floor. And I think it used to uh, – the rumor is is that the floor used to be one of the old bowling alleys here in town before they took it and they were put it in there. I think they said it was like the old University of Montana's UC bowling alley because there used to be a bowling alley in the, in the University Center. Um, I don't know. But you can always check it out at the Missoula Senior Center and play some Cribbage and Bridge, have some lunch, and destroy some fellow old folks at – card games. Teen Writers Group is happening at 3.30 in the afternoon. Uh, Musical Public Library, once again, are you a teen writer who needs a little inspiration and or feedback? Come to the Teen Writers Group and let your inner artist flourish. Meeting places vary, but young adult librarian on duty will know where to send you. The Creative Act, colon, works by Rudy Audio. Radius Gallery is opening. It's their grand opening. Um, they're not on their Main Street anymore. They're on Higgins Avenue, right next to the uh, Mercantile, where the former Uptown Diner is. Audio's 50-year collection shaped the face of contemporary ceramics and established Montana as a lo locus for an innovative artist making. I, uh, that's basically what it says, locus. The exhibition shows Audio's li lively, uh, boundary-pushing ceramics, his lush paintings and prints, his newly published memoir, and many stories of an art-filled life. Um, and it's going to be happening in the first gallery, and it's at 120 North Higgins. You can't miss it. It's, like, right there. It's right next to the closed Pita Pit. <laughs> it's not like I miss Pita Pit. It doesn't matter. I, don't, I probably ate there once every three months. Anyways... <laughs> Um, you can go to uh, the new Radius Gallery, which just opened up. It's two floors of art. It's great. Um, 
Family Friendly Friday at the Top Hat. They're just a fun activity for a family to get together and just enjoy some stuff at the Top Hat. Uh, Winter Ball, they're happening at the Free Cycles. Free Cycles is a wonderful source for people to help you rebuild and build bikes, uh, but they always have a bunch of uh, great concerts that happen. So the Scurfs, New Old Furniture, and Cosmic, uh, Cosmic Sands it will be playing at the uh, Free Cycles Winter Ball. Um, Dress in the nines and grab a dancing partner for this fun and spectacular all-age event. It's a $5 donation. Formal wear is encouraged, but not necessary. And it's f open for all ages. Um, hey, if you're missing the farmer's market, don't worry about it. Because Saturday, 9 a.m., Orchard Homes. It's basically kind of next to the Red Barn, but it's their coup. I'm pretty sure it's the chicken coo. Um, Orchard Homes, Winter Market, looking local foods and crafts. Join us every Saturday through the end of March from 9 to 1 p.m., 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. every Saturday. And they're located at the corner of uh, Reserve and 3rd Street. You can uh, Google Orchard Homes Winter Market for more information and details on the other events. Um, actually, it's probably not the Red Barn. It's... I believe it's there's like a building you really can't miss it it's like you go down the street and you look to your left and you should see a bunch of cars parked in that particular area I think I've seen that a couple times all right the Zach is doing a so printy series aprons hey you want to make your own apron they're doing a class about aprons it's hundred and forty five dollars and it's 9 30 to 11 30 a.m. Uh, there's a five-week class of students so it's not just uh, happening it's kicking off this Saturday, but it's going to be going on for five weeks. Uh, and you will learn basic screen, screen printing skills and sewing machine instructions to create an apron for all your cooking and artistic needs. Winter Storytown with Philip Burgess. This is at the Traveler's Rest State Park. Starting at 11 a.m., you get to uh, who uh, Phil Burgess. He's a veteran, poet, storyteller, ex-gypsy, ex-therapist, ex-cab driver living in the Missoula. He's a all-around man of the world. Um, but he's living in Missoula, who nourishes and honors the his eastern Montana roots. He shares the story of Montana 1962, mother of the year, Evelyn Moore, a true Montana character. And of course, more about those uh, avalanche rescue courses. This is a little more modestly priced, and this is a $175 uh, Big Sky Brewing Company conference room. This is a eight-hour field course that teaches you the essential life-saving skills and techniques of companion rescue. Learn how to properly use your uh, transceiver, shovel, avalanche probe, and other gear. This course is great for any experience level and is intended to be retaken on a regular basis in order to keep to date on your best practices. And of course, as always, Saturday is host of Saturday Drop-Ins. If your kid is aged 9 to 13, roughly, uh, we usually have a couple kids that are a little bit younger than 9, but um, it's a great opportunity for kids to get involved with media, television. You know, if they want to be like, I want to be on YouTube. And it's a great way for them to uh, get a little dose of that reality and magic here at MCAT. <laughs> I'm really selling this, but it's $10 per kid. And if you have uh, siblings, it's $15 for siblings. So if you have uh, two siblings, $15. Three siblings, it's $15. So you can have up to three, <laughs> four siblings, and it's still $15. But overall, uh, it's $10 per kid, unrelated. Um, and it happens from 1 to 5 p.m. every single Saturday here at MCAT, 500 North Higgins Suite, 105. And then once we move into the library, we're going to have a, little, a couple more sessions, but they'll be shorter, and they'll be within the new library, which MCAT hopefully will be start moving in there in May of this year. Winter Carnival, Cold Spring School Gyms. Hey, uh, they're a new daycare facility. Hey, Cold Springs is going to be uh, hosting a, a hundred, over 150 new kids at their daycare. This event is a fundraiser for the Champions Club Incorporated. Uh, they are a booster club formed to foster national and international taekwondo ta competition. All funds raised will support athletes traveling to the national competitions this summer. It's $10 out the door, and if you're uh, if you're 18 and you and get 50 carnival dollars to spend, so you pay $10 to get the carnival tokens and you wander around, you can play bingo, poker, Jenga, uh, Connect Four, ring toss, beanbag toss, and uh, pinatas for kids. So it's going to be uh, quite a sight, and you get to check out what's happened with the old Cold Spring School since uh, MCPS opened Jeanette Rankin Peace Center, and it's happening on Saturday starting at 1 p.m. Um, I believe it's like maybe 1 to 5, 1 to 6. It's, it's going to go on pretty much most of the afternoon. Okay, Footloose Montana presents Trap Release Workshop. Uh, St. Anthony Parish Center at 1 p.m. is doing a several dogs have been trapped in the winter so far, and what do you do if your dog steps in a trap? Well, you're just wandering down the back country, and a trap traps him, and one thing uh, this class will teach you is how to avoid traps, trapping regulations, and how to open traps. 
um, once your, your furry friend has been trapped. All right, <laughs> that was a little too dramatic for my own case. But speaking of dramatic, MCT is launching their uh, show, Leading Ladies, at MCT. Leading Ladies is the story of Meg, a young woman in 1958 New York, um, in York, Pennsylvania. Sorry, not New York. So he, she's in New York. Anyways, she yearns for more than she can see from her front yard and small town. As she cares for her ailing wealthy aunt, Meg encounters two exciting and inventive out-of-work Shakespearean actors, Leo and Jack, who are masquerading as her cousins, Maxine and Stephanie, in hopes of inheriting a fortune. Uh, hilarity ensues and love blooms from these characters find themselves in new and crazy situations. Um, War of the Worlds, a reading. If you haven't heard it on the radio, um, you're going to have a bunch of actors at the uh, University of Montana, and they're going to be providing the sounds and the uh, many characters provided during the War of the Worlds uh, radio broadcast, and it's based on the uh, 1938 radio script by Howard E. Uh, Cock, and uh, based on the novel by H.G. Wells, and uh, which was originally read by Orson Welles as well. Um, Sunday. One thing that's uh, one thing that I do want to tell you, you folks about: if you are a female and you're looking to help empower some of the young girls in the city of Missoula, YWCA is hosting a guts volunteer application, and this is for women um, ages nine to eighteen, and this is to encourage not only. Um, older women, but also the younger women. It's a unique community-based leadership and powers program designed for young women ages 9 to 18. Action group facilitators lead weekly after school and lunchtime action groups made up of girls, nine binary, and gender diverse youth from Missoula's elementary, middle, and high schools. So it's a good opportunity if you're not doing anything on Sunday uh, and you have a kid who is between the age of 9 and 18. Um, so yeah, those are some of the things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. I wanted to thank you for joining me this morning. Next week we'll have a lot, a big, nice, thick uh, city council report for you guys as well. Um, but today was a uh, pretty uh, light city council. But I want to thank you guys for joining me once again. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. Mm -hmm.